Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Now turning to uh, my featured guests for tonight, uh, as I just said, uh, places of worship are now required by the uh, both state and federal government. And of course, uh, Scott Morrison, he's a Pentecostal uh, Christian. He, ha- he is the prime minister who's decreed that places of worship uh, now have to be shut. Most of them had already announced that their Easter services uh, were cancelled and had moved to, to e-sermons and streaming online. Now, what's occurred during uh, pandemics, plagues, natural and man-made disasters in the past is people have turned to uh, religion for answers uh, to improve their their state of mind and perspective. Uh, That has not happened here. Uh, Our faith, it seems, in fighting and containing the uh, coronavirus is uh, with uh, governments, uh, politicians, medical experts, and those on the front line in the health sector and essential services. The fact that uh, religion uh, in our society uh, has completely shut down in the West is, I previously mentioned, uh, this is uh, something worth exploring. And I'll just bring uh, Daniel now on Skype. Uh, so, Daniel, uh, we, we did a lot of uh, preparation, getting the, the technical aspects up, but can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'll ask the audience now. Uh, can you hear Daniel? I'll just wait for them to reply. And uh, we are a half an hour later than I originally scheduled to, to bring you in. So thank you for your Christian patience. In, uh, though we were scheduled to do this uh, last night as well. So not only am I late bringing you on tonight, but uh, last night as well. So thank you so much. No worries. And, uh, well, first I should ask, how are you doing uh, personally? Oh, I'm doing fine. I mean, I work from home anyway, so it's no really big deal. I mean, <laughs> I've been working in quarantine for the past 15 years, so <laughs> it's not that much of an issue for me, although now we have the kids home, so that's uh, making it a little bit tricky. Um, and my wife is not working out as much now, so, um, yeah, we just got to manage floor space and uh, all that kind of thing. But, yeah, we're doing okay. And how are you? it's 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 not a secret. Uh, your wife your wife's name is Tammy. You've got uh, three mm-hmm. kids, so they're all managing. They're all healthy. All healthy. Yep. The only one who's had sniffles has been me. So okay. <laughs> I've had this, uh, as I said to my audience, beginning of the the show, a bit of a sore throat. I haven't got uh, uh, a fever or or anything like that, but. Uh, uh, as uh, to set a good example, uh, social distancing. Even if you've got a, if you've got the the means to to not go out, uh, stay home, uh, protect others. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And now, for those who uh, don't know uh, about uh, uh, Daniel, uh, he is a Christian uh, end times uh, speaker and uh, Bible teacher. And uh, your biography mentioned that you administered at various churches and conferences throughout Australia and the the United States. Obviously, uh, you're not uh, doing that uh, at the moment. No, no, no travel. And uh, you're also the the founder of the the Christian news uh, websites, uh, Israel, Islam and End Times and uh, Culture War uh, Resource. Correct. Uh, So first... uh, uh, I'll, I'll ask you, obviously, uh, I just mentioned uh, with the, the, there's no more, uh, min- no more ministry work can be done by uh, physical uh, traveling. So in that regard, uh, how, how, how has your, your work uh, changed? How are, how are Christians communicating uh, with, e- with each other? Because as I mentioned, places of worship have shut down, which is, it's quite unprecedented. I mean, I'm as, as, you and my audience know uh, I'm I'm an atheist, so I probably don't appreciate the gra- gravity of churches closing and not holding Easter services. Yeah, yeah, it, it is unprecedented. One of the most startling photos that I saw floating around on social media was a photo of the Western Wall completely empty, a photo of the Vatican Square with the Vatican Square completely empty. 
and a photo of the of Mecca completely empty. Um, so you absolutely are right in saying that we are living in unprecedented times. It's there's no question about that. Um, I just got back from a meeting uh, with my pastor, and uh, we initially were going to roll out a plan uh, for us to gather in small groups. Um, different uh, houses will have um, people will basically be hosting little small group sessions. But now with the latest um, recommendations from the government, we are now looking at taking everything completely online. So we're looking at doing Zoom and getting um, each of the people connected with that so that each of the home group leaders would just simply get on Zoom, send out an invitation to each of the different participants, and they will log in that way. So that's the way we're looking at it. However, I went to set up Zoom for my my dad yesterday, and I couldn't even get on. Like it's like Zoom was being inundated. So um, yeah, interesting times. Uh, one of my uh, Uncuckables uh, co-hosts, James Fox Higgins, he actually recommends Zoom over Skype because I do too. And his uh, internet uh, doesn't work well on Skype, but it works perfect on Zoom. We are via Skype now, and it seems to be working perfectly. I remember when, because uh, I first interviewed you, you were one of my early guests on the Unshackled Waves program. I was based at uh, home. Obviously, you still work work a lot uh, at home, but I remember both our internets were quite bad uh, then on my end and your end, but uh, we're doing all right uh, with uh, the, uh, the live stream on my end and, and your end, because a lot of people have been talking about everyone online. Uh, have we got the, the bandwidth on our national... National Broadband Network uh, brought to us by Kevin Rudd and Stephen Conroy. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it seems to be holding up uh, quite well. Yeah, it's, um, no problem so far. Yeah, but that's what, that's one of the things that, that they've talked about because obviously everyone is is now working working from home uh, as much as possible. I mentioned uh, e sermons. Uh, how have Christians uh, responded to this? Because obviously you and your pastor you understand so you're compliant uh, with the the social distancing uh, gu- yeah. guidelines here, but. Uh, ordinary Christians who, because I mentioned in the past uh, during plagues and, and pandemics, the, the church has played a, a big role, but it's, yep. religion seems to have come to a standstill. Yeah, and that's what makes this uh, these circumstances even the more, more unique. Uh, the church has been on the front foot for the majority of cases throughout history where there has been plagues and pestilences and delivering humanitarian need and all those kinds of things. But this one is is what we're experiencing right now is really, um, yeah, they're definitely unusual, definitely unusual. Um, I would even put it even down to, to um, biblical. I think the Bible has a lot to say about where we're at at the moment. And um, I, I see for many of us as Christians, we were kind of expecting these days to come anyway. So it uh, for me, um, I see I started my Israel Islam and End Times back in my website and my ministry back in 2013. That's where I really had a strong uh, sense to start that website and start to get people to be informed in regards to what's going on in our world at the moment. But uh, I. We're definitely seeing this ramp up, this this building up, this building up. And, um, you know, we opened up the year with, well, initially last year, leading up to last year, we had massive drought. And then that gave way to unprecedented. Oh. I wouldn't say unprecedented, but we had fires. I've seen, a, I look like I've um, frozen a little, little bit. Are we, are we yeah, so the um, we've had the we're drinking, jinxing the internet. So yeah, we had those massive bush, and then we had the the drought. That sorry, the um, we had the floods, and after the floods, we're now experiencing this massive global pandemic, which is completely unprecedented. 
So all these things that are going on at the moment, um, like I said to you before, they haven't really caught us by surprise. Uh, the bowl actually has a lot about these, these kinds of things. Uh, basically, uh, God says in two, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13, he says, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain. So you can basically referring to the drought that we had, which led up to the fires. Or command locusts to devour the land, he says. And we're experiencing massive locust plagues in, in northeast Africa, which are now consuming large parts of the Middle East at the moment. And uh, we're hardly ever where there are new swarms actually forming uh, as we speak, which, w which are tipped to devour most of the Middle East that will go up to uh, Passover. Uh, and then it goes on to say, or command locust plagues to devour the land or send a plague among my people. So there we have the, the drought. There we have the locust plagues. And there we have, and then we have the, the plague or the pestilence that he sends. He says, if my people who were called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. So, um, it's almost as if God is trying to get our attention at the moment. Um, so that's one of the, the firm beliefs that we have at the moment that, that, that his patience is, uh, is um, wearing thin. And that's exactly why we're experiencing what we're, we're experiencing at the moment. A few people have complained about uh, my sound uh, level is, I've noticed with this I've got to be as close to the microphone uh, as possible just to my audience is my sound level now is at about the same as, as Daniel's let me know uh, in the in the chat but yes that was you uh, 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 basically preempted uh, my next uh, question and said uh, uh, to show that I've I've done my homework on, on this the 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 Abrahamic uh, religions, which are Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, they they have uh, theologies known as eschat eschatology. Eschatology. Uh, I'm not good at uh, uh, pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Uh, but uh, that predicts an an end times, end of days, or uh, judgment day. And you mentioned the the locusts in in Africa. I had not heard that uh, at all. And uh, but of course. Uh, uh, as we know, lo locusts is a is a sign of of, of plagues, uh, yeah. though, or 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 our own times. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we we have seen because I would say Monday was probably the beginning of where we saw it really hit people hard. The 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 fact that there's at least going to be a recession, probably mm -hmm. a depression, maybe something worse than that, one to two million. Uh, unemployed. We saw the, the 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 Centrelink lines. They looked largely orderly, um, but I think probably just people were de demoralised. We we do have public order uh, in place, uh, though uh, we do do see people, as I mentioned in my introduction, flagrantly ignoring uh, social uh, distancing. The worst we've seen is those uh, supermarket fights over over toilet paper, uh, but uh, they <laughs> have. Uh, have have died down. So I know a lot of people have said this this could get a lot worse. People could get mm. uh, just uh, much more desperate, uh, demoralised. A lot of us have been poor at predicting where this might go. So how do you think this is likely to uh, to play out? Because national mm. cabinets meeting right now, they might introduce even stricter contagion measures. Mm. Uh, personally, I think it's going to get a bit. It's going to get. It's going to be worse before it gets better. Um, I tend to believe that we'll start to see this thing wrap up. Well, not wrap up, but I, I think we'll get back to not see signs of normality around mid-May. Um, but that's just just that's just my thoughts. Uh, but I think we are still aren't going to see the end of the this. It's going to be a very rocky road. That's what I'm trying to say. Very rocky road. Um, so yeah, how do I, I guess, interpret this and people can say, well, you know, how can, how can God do this? Why would he do this? You know, um, from a Christian perspective, um, and I, I guess I sort of touched on, on it 
earlier. The thing is, is that the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So if righteousness exalts a nation, the opposite is true. Wickedness basically removes God's hand of blessing. And we have been a blessed nation for many years. I mean, we've been known as the lucky country. In fact, I don't really believe... I don't believe that we're, we are lucky. I think that we have been blessed. We have just been blessed because we've lived under this Christian worldview, which has caused us to succeed and do so well, as much as Western civilization has done well. In fact, Western civilization is Western civilization because of Christianity. Christianity laid the foundation in regard to the laws that we have uh, and things like that. So I guess, um, as I said before, uh, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to, to many people. And we, at the moment, we are seeing um, our nation pull away from our Christian heritage. This is why we are seeing the rise of the left. The left are becoming more and more powerful uh, because we are basically cutting off the, the anchors uh, cutting off the the, the, um, the the chains to our anchors, where we uh, our our Christian worldview has basically kept us in a state of uh, freedom and a state of economic prosperity and a state of uh, stability for a, for a very long time. And now the left is really pushing hard uh, in pulling pulling us away from Christianity. And uh, see. We, we are transitioning at the moment. We're transitioning from a Christian worldview to a post-Christian worldview. And in the process with that happening, what the left is doing at the moment, they're trying to get rid of the old moral code. The old moral code, which is basically where what we have inherited from, from Christianity. It's, uh, so we've been going by the Ten Commandments uh, inadvertently, inadvertently. Uh, subconsciously, in many, I guess, you, if you could put it that way. Um, but now the left uh, are basically taking it upon our, themselves where they think that they can be, let's just say, God, gods, and they can come up with their own moral code. And that's exactly what political correctness is. Political correctness is the new moral code for a people that have rejected God. And that is why we are experiencing so much madness in society. The, the madness, you, you've seen the mad. In fact, you report on a lot of the madness. But the madness is really extraordinary. And I cannot help but think of a quote by uh, G.K. Chesterton who said, when man ceases to believe in God, it is not that, that he then believes in nothing. It is that he is capable of believing anything. And so this is why it's an open slather at the moment in regard to the ridiculous um, things that our culture has completely swallowed, that man can be a woman and woman can be a man. And, uh, you know, there is no end to the madness. I mean, just every single day you open up your laptop and go to a news site <laughs> and you just think the level of the bar has been raised in madness. So, but again, the Bible speaks about these times. The Bible says that there will be a powerful delusion that will come upon the people, a powerful delusion. And this is exactly what we're, we're seeing right now. The Bible also says there will be an increase of wickedness. Now, of course, to the left, they don't believe in right and wrong. They don't believe in objective good and evil. So they wouldn't know if what they're doing is evil. You know, they just base it on their own understanding of what they think is good and what they think is, is bad. You know, in fact, for many uh, leftists, what they think is actually good to them is actually squaring off against their enemies. That's what they think is good. And uh, so you can see how this relativism has basically given way to narcissism. Narcissism has given way to nihilism. And we are now living in a, a state where the culture has become so utterly wicked. And what does a wicked culture do to good people? I mean, this is the old adage that evil people hate good people. The, I mean, you just have to watch... Oh, typical the bad guy hates hates the hates the the good guys and this goes right back to what 
George Orwell said, the further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those that speak it. And Jesus warned about that. He said, you'll be hated by all nations because of me. You'll be put into prison, Jesus warned. And already we're seeing things like that happening in England where street preachers are being arrested. You know, um, We're seeing a, a Finnish politician who's been threatened, threatened with jail time because she quoted, in fact, she was pretty much like uh, Finland's version of Israel Folau, except she's facing jail time because she paraphrased the Bible verse on homosexuality. So we're seeing persecution ramp up big time. And so, again, this is no surprise. Yeah, well, we've seen the, the, you mentioned the, the police in the, the UK was that they're investigating people for, for misgendering, uh, and now they've got to actually do real police work uh, <laughs> to make sure that uh, uh, people are obeying the, the, the national lockdown. But you mentioned uh, delusion there, and obviously uh, there's been a lot of uh, tweets and, and memes that uh, there's been no more mentions about uh, non-binary genders, which is <laughs> the ultimate uh, delusion there since the, the, the pandemic. And yep. they, uh, a lot of people have pointed out that, and you can mention climate change with this as well, all yeah, exactly. world problems have completely uh, exactly. evaporated. Uh, uh, you, uh, using the right pronouns that won't save you from getting the the coronavirus. I mean, the, the virus is, uh, Josh Frydenberg uh, said last night, this is an enemy that has uh, no face, uh, uh, no yep. flag. It also has no mind. It does not... Uh, it's indiscriminate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%. I want to know if Greta Thunberg has gone back to school. Well, schools are shut down. So... <laughs> I'm not sure about Sweden individually, but this has totally yeah. killed uh, climate strikes because how can you strike from school if they're, they're, they're shut down? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was sort of the, the new age religion. The, uh, Tim Flannery, the, the way he thought of himself as a climate prophet, talked about uh, Gaia, the, 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 the natural, uh, natural earth uh, deity. And yep. we have you talked you talked about wickedness as well. We've seen well yep. that uh, the uh, a lot of I don't know the exact amount, but uh, the pornography uh, industry chews up a lot of uh, internet uh, traffic as well. Uh, obviously, we've seen the uh, the hospitality and live entertainment uh, industry shut down as well. That's where a lot of uh, uh, degeneracy. Uh, happened. I mean, look at the music festivals, uh, for example, how much grief they've brought uh, over the past uh, few years. Uh, but you, I know you don't use the word God's punishment. You say he removes his protection, which is actually the correct terminology. Mm. But we've seen, I'm not sure how much of a target uh, you are, but uh, we saw Israel Folau. He was heavily criticised for saying, or, well, this is what the media said, he said, that uh, the bushfires uh, were God's punishment for uh, the state, uh, state of New South Wales legalising abortion and uh, same-sex mm. uh, marriage. I interviewed uh, Danny Ninalia uh, a few uh, months back uh, after the Victorian Black Saturday bushfires in 2009. He was uh, condemned for saying a similar thing because uh, Victoria, just before the bushfires, had legalised uh, abortion. And mm. this is... Uh, you you mentioned the, the we're, well, we're both talking about the decline of Christianity. This is how people such as yourself are treated when you say that there's a a a biblical explanation for it. You say, "How dare you say that uh, the people deserve this? That uh, they mm. deserve the the bushfires, the the droughts uh, uh, mm. for this? Uh, what type of uh, insensitive uh, person are you?" But uh, with the the climate religion, uh, they uh, they feel completely at, at at liberty to to say the the bushfires are a punishment for not caring for the the earth and yeah. reducing carbon emissions. So uh, there is a double standard. Yeah, look, our our culture has been basically has this false assumption. And the false assumption is based on that the Christian God is a God of love. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. He's always forgiving. You can do whatever you want. And it, but if you just come back to God and say, look, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. 
you know, and just go and just go out the next day and keep doing it. And God's always smiling. He's always smiling. He's always full of love. He's like, you know, your old gentle, uh, warm and cuddly grandpa kind of a thing, you know. But that is a, a massive and extremely dangerous false assumption because God is just as perfect in his um, in his wrath and in his judgment as he in in his love and in his mercy so we need to be careful that we don't focus so much on on, zero in on particular aspects of god's nature and his character because god is holistic in his in his character i mean he has all the different um aspects of his character that we, we all have i mean we all get angry we all get full of um mushy gooey love feelings warm and fuzzies and things like that but we need to understand that that if when you read the bible and that get a grasp of of god's nature and his character yes he is a god of love and he is a god of um of mercy but he also and he's also extremely patient and this is what we need to understand his patience always comes to an end when it comes to the story of the ark the door of the ark eventually was shut and, uh, and those who were left outside of the ark perished. So the patience of God comes to an end where he will no longer put up with the wickedness of a, of a particular nation or civilization. And what we are experiencing right now is basically um, where it's a time of reckoning. It's a time of reckoning where, where basically we are beginning to see, to witness. Now, Jesus explained that the lead that, that one of the major signs in the lead up to his return would be like the birth t- birth pains of major events so he said there's going to be uh, he said there will be earthquakes he said there will be famines in fact let me just quickly read it to you this is from luke he says nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom there'll be great earthquakes famines he says pestilences there you go viruses and, and various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. So, but Jesus said that all these things will happen within the context of birth pains. In other words, when a woman go, goes into labor, she has contractions. And so initially, um, you know, when my wife was pregnant, she would experience a thing called Braxton Hicks contractions. They're not actually really contractions at all. They're fake contractions. But these are a lead up to the real contractions, and eventually the real contractions kick in, and kick in, and and boy, you know when the real contractions come. So we've experienced lots and lots of fake contractions, but all of a sudden, right now, over the past three months, we are experiencing a major contraction, and and Jesus said this is exactly what you need to look for. I would imagine in another couple of months, um, you know, this will go by the wayside. And coronavirus will be in memory, but then and there'll be a period of time where, where there's peace and, and normality. But I believe there will come another time where there will be another intense birth pain. And the thing with birth pains is that they're the, the closer you get to the woman to the baby being born, the birth pains become more intense and closer together. More intense, closer together. The further you weigh out you are away from that they're not as intense and they're far apart so that's exactly how jesus said to gauge um his return in regard to the last day's events and this is why i'm saying whenever i say yeah we're in the last days i'm not saying that jesus is going to appear within the next you know 48 hours i'm not i'm not saying that at all neither would he appear within the next week or even you know month or even years what I am saying is, is that this is not the end, but it is the beginning of the end. Uh, during the the outbreak of the the pandemic, uh, there there have been your other website is Culture War res- Resource. Uh, there have been yeah. uh, some uh, culture warriors who uh, have been. Uh, condemned for their their comments on the coronavirus. One of them was uh, Laurie Alexander, who is the the transformed wife. I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with with her work, but she, in a recent post, and 
uh, I am getting this information from Pink News, so I've actually read the the quotes, not the not the headline here. Uh, but uh, she admitted she was not a regular hand washer, not afraid of germs, uh, but uh, she believed that uh, culture war issues such as uh, uh, abortion, transgenderism, pornography, uh, sex trafficking were more destructive uh, than the. Uh, the virus, and then we also saw, well, Margaret Court, she's always uh, mocked uh, uh, because yeah. uh, she uh, she originally was not going to close her physical church uh, services because she believed that her followers were going to be uh, protected by the, the, the blood uh, of mm -hmm. Jesus. So I'll just get you mm -hmm. to comment on those uh, uh, two, uh, two comments. Okay, so, okay, the first one... Um, the, the what was her name again? Laurie Alexander. Laurie Alexander. Okay, so uh, basically, um, and where, what d direction was she coming from in regard to? That she still believed that uh, the 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 culture war issues such as uh, abortion, yeah. transgenderism, yeah. pornography, yeah, 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 were still more destructive than the the virus. I mean, this story is is dated mm. on March sixteenth. That's a week later. Oh look, oh look. Naturally speaking, I don't think it's it's. it's uh, this is the thing. We, we, the, the abortion and all those culture war issues are are what I would say are precursors. They are precursors um, to what we're experiencing now, I believe. Um, so God, again, as I said before, this is a time of reckoning. And uh, God's patience eventually comes to an end. So, um, look, a lot of the... If, you, if you're talking from a natural perspective, I mean, um, this virus, with what it's doing upon, to our country right now, is far worse. But... Coming from her perspective, when you consider that that all those culture war issues such as abortion, LGBT, and all that kind of stuff, it's a precursor that leads up that leads to this to where we're at, where we are now. Now, in regard to Margaret Court, um, she's a, a hero of mine. I have great respect for her because she basically comes out with it, and she's not afraid. <laughs> Massive respect to her that she can actually come out and say what she says. By the way, what she's saying would have been perfectly acceptable 20 years ago. No one would have batted an eyelid. It's just that the fact that our culture has changed so much, we have descended so much into wickedness that we haven't noticed. In fact, it's the whole thing with the proverbial frog in the saucepan. Do you know what I mean when I talk about the frog in the saucepan? Yeah, that's the... Uh... That's not a, a biblical reference, though. That's no, it's not. Patrick Hayek, uh, The Road to Serfdom. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So the frog, uh, if you were to throw a frog into a saucepan with boiling hot water, it would immediately jump out because it, 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 the, uh, it immediately senses that the, that the surface of the water is extremely hot. However, if you were to put the frog in the saucepan and, in cold water, but you put it on top of the stove and you slowly heat it up, the frog will eventually uh, die. It will die from the the increase in the temperature. The frog doesn't notice because it's cold blooded, that and that it's actually cooking itself to death. But this is exactly it's this great analogy because this is exactly where we are with Western civilization. Uh, in, we're not just us, but in in England and in America and in any other Western nation, we have just basically gone headlong into depravity, headlong into de degeneracy. And we haven't noticed. We haven't noticed. Although sometimes we notice when we go to, uh, you know, like Sanity, we, we pick up a really old DVD and we say, well, why is that R-rated? Why <laughs> That shouldn't be R-rated. You know, when you pick it up, one of our Clint Eastwood's old movies, and you think you've got... You look at the R rating, you think that's ridiculous. Yeah, The Godfather was originally R rated, which yeah. apart from the what is it, the the, the horsehead scene, there's there's yeah. not much else blood and gore. Yeah, exactly. And in, and also when we sing Christmas carols. When we sing Christmas carols, we realise, my goodness, this comes back from an era where we were so godly minded. We were so much more Christian orientated. Uh, and when we sang Christmas carols, they resonated with uh, every single one of us because of the words. But now, 
you know, like there are, there are councils that are, are banning the Christmas carols, such as, as we saw over in Western Australia and even here in Sydney. They're banning them because they're completely um, – it's, it's foreign and alien to the culture that we live in right now. And Christianity has, has become something that is something that is to be abhorred by, something to be absolutely repulsed by. And again, to us Christians, that doesn't come as any surprise. We, we haven't mentioned yet, but you could say that this was probably the, 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 the peak of the uh, degeneracy and just uh, the, 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 the open uh, uh, sexual immorality was uh, Drag Queen Story Hour, which oh, yeah. we, uh, it started in the United States and it's, it's come to Australia as well. And in January, we, we saw uh, Wilson Gavin, uh, who... He was uh, gay himself, uh, yeah. though he was a, a Catholic conservative, protested Drag Queen Story Hour. He didn't interrupt the service. It was afterwards he's, he, he and his um, uh, fellow uh, protesters said drag queens are not for kids, but the social media backlash and, and bullying after that was so intense that he took his own life, and which yeah. is horrific that... For simply saying that drag queens are not for kids, and I interviewed a a, a, a drag queen, Kitty Demure, a few a few weeks back, who agrees with Wilson Gavin and hates drag queen story story art because drag queens are they've always been adult entertainers. Absolutely. And it was I know Alex Jones can be hyperbolic. He literally made the point that they look demonic these child uh, the, these uh, drag queen story hour readers to children. Yeah. Well, yeah, you just said it. I mean, it's uh, they do look demonic, and it's um, and it's not just a look thing. The, these people are not do not re represent wholesome values at all. Part of the reason why it's taking off because leftists love the fact that they can have a dig at Christians, that they can have a dig at uh, conservatives, and so they double down. And they are brazen in their support of it because they know how much it upsets conservatives. Um, so they see it as a virtue, like a virtue signaling opportunity for them in which they can embrace tolerance and inclusivity. And, of course, the uh, victims are going to be their children, uh, which they are completely um, blindsided by. Uh, Introducing children to these adult themes at such a young age is destructive. It doesn't end in a good way at all. And um, it, sadly, it'll be years from now where we will actually see the true um, wreckage from the damage that they're causing. Where I come at it from an atheist perspective and a, a, a cultural analysis point of view is that We've seen ba basically through what we've just talked about uh, the uh, more selfish, narcissistic uh, behaviour, more living uh, in the moment, uh, not thinking mm -hmm. about uh, community, neighbours. Yep. Nobody would know. Not many people would know who their next door neighbours are, and that's why we saw, despite uh, this pandemic, the, those people at, at Bondi Beach congregating in in pubs and clubs, not. Not, uh, not making the appropriate sacrifice, taking appropriate care. And I come at the, the coronavirus from an evolutionary perspective is that viruses always evolve. We've had these pandemics yeah. all throughout uh, history. I mentioned just this century, we've had uh, SARS, uh, bird flu, swine flu, Ebola. Uh, we had the, the Zika virus just uh, a few uh, mm -hmm. years back and since we've also uh, i mentioned the basically how we've we've become so dependent on other parts of the world international trade it was globalism that spread this virus so rapidly our dependence that we weren't self-reliant we we weren't saving for a rainy day we and now we're paying the price for that because we forgot that viruses are, are always one step ahead of us yeah yeah that's it's that's absolutely true and um you have probably heard of the the old saying that goes that um um 
oh, I'm just trying to think of the, the term for it. But some of you, you might know what I'm talking about, where it says weak civilizations give way to, um, to, um, to tyrannical, uh, to, to, to slavery. Uh, and then that, that brings forth the, the, um, that brings about the brave, um, brave civilization, and the brave civilization leads to liberty. So there's like this cycle, and this is what we saw happening with the Roman Empire. Um, you know, the, the when when Rome fell, it, it it fell because of a lot of the problems that we are actually experiencing right now. So the welfare state was a big one. Um, the welfare state, and then also too, Rome was overrun with refugees. In fact, the 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 Vandals um, were um, or the Goths uh, per se were basically refugees that Rome actually let in. Um, then there was the high taxation. Uh, there was the the servicing massive wars, um, servicing a massive armies that that were involved in in campaigns all over the Roman world. Um, and then there was the debauchery. There was the the extreme um, uh, debauchery of lifestyle in regard to homosexuality and all those kinds of things that were present in the Roman Empire. And eventually, the Roman Empire couldn't hold up any longer, and it collapsed. So, in in that sense, we are seeing that happening right now. Um, and so it's, it's very, very interesting because here's what I'm concerned about, because if it happens to America, we're going to be in a very, very bad place because if America goes down, we all go down. In fact, it was Ronald Reagan who said that if we lose our freedom here, there is no other place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. And I believe he's absolutely correct. If America goes down, we are gone. We are finished. And this is why I'm always um, – and, and I say this to the Americans myself when I go over there and speak to them. I say, listen, you know, I'm an Australian. I'm not one of you. But listen, you need to know that we are totally uh, for you being strong and maintaining your strength of leadership in the world because if you lose your leadership – we're gone. You know, if, if China called the shots in the world, if China was the one who dominated the world, there'll be many of us that will be in the same position of the Muslims in China who are in concentration camps. You know, and this here's the thing that we need to understand. I mean, and America's values come from, well, just look at their founding documents. Much of their founding documents are all soaked in Christianity. And because of that, the, their constitution has brought about so much freedom, personal liberty. Um, this is where there is emphasis on the the individual, on the citizen, and where the government shrinks. Whereas in China, it's the opposite. It's the government that is preeminent, and the citizen doesn't matter. So, um, so we need at at the moment we just uh, if we're we're heading down a very worrying traje trajectory because I'm very very concerned about the future of of America whether they will be able to hold this, um, the status quo and basically um, maintain their strength of leadership in the world today. Because if the Democrats get in power, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. You know, Sure, we've had the Obama administration and things like that previously, but the, the Democrats have become so extreme um, that they... Uh, they are basically unrecognizable of the Democrats like 10, 10 years ago. I mean, now we have open, openly, um, openly confessed card-carrying socialists who openly deal not only with the socialists but with communists. And this is the Democrat Party has, has been basically overrun by these people, uh, including Ilhan Omar and... Um, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Oh, AOC, and, absolutely. Uh, it was at uh, uh, there's Rashida Tlaib and I believe yeah, her. Rihanna Presley. She's the one who's advocating release the prisoners to stop yeah. the spread of the, the coronavirus. Whereas release yeah. people from a social isolation. How does yeah. how does that help fight the coronavirus? And you really think 
they're in jail because they've they they've broken the law. Are you going? Yeah. To, are they going to obey social distancing when they get out? No, no. In fact, the the, the the left rely upon these people to create agitation. The left rely upon criminals, and this is why they're so big on open borders, is because um, a very high percentage of the illegal immigrants who come up from it, from Mexico, a very large percentage of them have criminal records or have a criminal background and the left are really warm to these people because first of all they vote socialist because many of them have come from socialist nations themselves uh, uh, and secondly because they create agitation they basically put a strain on the law on law enforcement and um, the left wants to outweigh it wants to uh, basically overwhelm uh, law and order, because this is how they bring about their their revolution by putting a strain onto the uh, law and order, and it makes people feel insecure. And when people are feeling insecure, what do they cry out for? Well, they cry out for more government. They cry out for more power. They cry out for more of a police state. Um, and so this is why this is exactly why they want to release them. They they in fact here's the other reason too. See, the left do not believe in right and wrong, as we discussed earlier. They do not believe in objective good and evil, okay? So they believe that criminals are not imprisoned uh, because they are evil, because they don't believe in evil. They think that they are victims of an oppressive system. They believe that they are unfair victims of an oppressive system that needs to be abolished, and that's why they are so pro-criminal. And, uh, you know, you might think this is a bit extreme or over the top. It's not extreme at all. Just have a look at in San Francisco where they are basically trying to reword phrases such as, um, uh, um, for example, felons. You don't refer to them as felons. You call them um, justice-involved people. Yes, uh I, I, I've heard about the, these new terms as well, and I, I would, although I don't uh, recommend people watching mainstream media uh, regularly, but uh, outsiders on Sky News Sunday morning, they, they basically catalogue all of these uh, uh, ridiculous uh, word changes, and that is one of them. Yeah. Let's focus on some uh, silver linings that there, there, there might be as a result of uh, once this pandemic is over, people reassess uh, their, their lives and uh, or governments reassess how they've been conducting themselves. It was extremely uh, disgusting that uh, before uh, New Zealand's lockdown, they rushed through uh, their abortion decriminalization yeah. bill, which basically it gives the, it, it gives the the nation mo or one of the most extreme abortion laws in in the world. As long as it only only one doctor needs to sign off after after twenty weeks. In Victoria, it's two doctors have to sign off in. New Zealand, it's just one has to sign off after 20 weeks that it's okay, which is, yeah. there's even less of a, a safeguard. But we are seeing governments all around the world, they are introducing these lockdown measures, these social yep. isolation uh, measures, and obviously they're motivated, they don't want the health system overwhelmed, but it's primarily to save lives, uh, mainly the elderly and the vulnerable, not letting them die. And we have seen some horrible hashtags on social media, such as a, a boomer removal that, yeah, this is going to kill off all the, the old people, so we'll get yeah. uh, uh, some of the wealth. But we, the message is universally from the medical profession, which, of, of course, is there. Uh, uh, doctors have the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. We, yeah. are, uh, we are doing this to protect the, the vulnerable, to protect life, and that is, that, that is great. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the left will never, will never let an emergency go to waste. The left will never let a crisis be squandered. Um, and this is why they are rubbing their hands in situations like this. You know, um, you mentioned F.A. Hayek earlier, the author of The Road to Serfdom. He actually said that emergencies have always been the pretext on which the safeguards of individual liberty have been eroded. And I think, boy, if that is... If that is ever so pertinent, it's for the times that we're living in right now. 
Now, H.L. Mencken said, the urge to save humanity is almost always a false front for the urge to rule. So the left r always rise to the occasion in, in, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of emergencies. And this is why um, Nancy Pelosi basically had a pork-stuffed um, bill that, that, that she was trying to, get to ram through Congress. Um, but she had all sorts of ridiculous things in that bill that had nothing to do with the coronavirus. Some of the, her, her agendas in, included um, ballot harvesting with no limit. There was, uh, you know, um, postal votes. Um, she also emphasised where she, man, there was all these different things that were complete. Oh, uh, uh, funding for abortion. Mm. Funding for abortion. All these things she tried to sneak into the bill uh, to get it passed under the guise of the uh, coronavirus um, emergency relief bill. But again, this is what the left does. They never let a crisis go to waste. They will do whatever they possibly can to expand the power of the state and to ensure that power rests into the hands of fewer and fewer people. They call those uh, hidden uh, measures, hidden in those sort of stimulus, they call them poison pills. That is a literal uh, yeah. poison pill. Thankfully, in Australia, there's uh, I, I know bipartisanship is, is not uh, always a good thing, but uh, we need uh, politicians to, to not bicker during this time and, and work constructively. The, the National Cabinet has been functioning Quite well, and I think I'm so glad that Scott Morrison's the Prime Minister at the moment and not Me too. Bill, Bill Shorten. Can you imagine him during this crisis? Scott Morrison seems, and he's had that horrible nickname, Scotty, from marketing, but you sort of need a marketing guy to sort of soothe the nation, just basically, because he is sort of preempting the, uh, the, the ramping up of the measures, giving us enough notice so i think he is taking the the right approach and it's good that anthony albanese is the the opposition leader he even though he's from the the left you you know that he's got a a good heart yeah. he's in politics for the the right reason and yes so even so um we're, we're, we're seeing people like uh, Mike Carlton and, and Bernard Keane on Twitter saying, OK, I'm going to stop with the, the, the SCOMO bashing and, and that uh, we're in a warlike situation. So, we are, yeah. Uh, 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 but uh, it is, uh, we, we are seeing, obviously, I talked about the lines at uh, Centrelink, uh, reliance and dependence on government has already uh, increased. Uh, you mentioned Rome before. Uh, they mm. uh, also debased the, the currency. That's what our government is doing yeah. as well, printing more money, creating it out of thin air, making everyone poorer. And our government doesn't have any money. It's, it's, in, it's in debt. It's, it's borrowing it. Uh, but we are seeing civil society uh, return. They're checking on your neighbours. They're the elderly. Uh, charity and compassion are again on the rise. We see businesses eating, e even the the banks uh, grant granting uh, grace on on loans, and that would have been unspeakable six months ago. We know how immoral they've been, and we haven't yeah. seen the anger, rage, and selfishness uh, subsiding uh, a bit. And of course, I'm referencing the the supermarket rage as well. There's we're seeing a bit more compassion, a bit more uh, politeness, manners, that sort of thing. Like I, I try to do it at the beginning of the show, asking how are you uh, and your family. I'm, I'm going to do that with all my guests now because it's, it's good. It, it, we, we want to know during this crisis. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, like I said before, I don't think we're out of the woods yet, but it's uh, thank God that we live in Australia, man. I mean, we are we live in such a... A blessed country in a sense that our our health care is 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 in a is in a good position and i hope it stays that way i certainly hope that we don't go down the same road as as italy um and yeah we are, there is an over dependence i suppose on government but when it comes to over dependence i think we one of the greatest dangers that we face is our over dependence on china yeah um, definitely and i've we've i've already spoken a lot about that as well yeah, totally. I think we really need to look at ourselves in the mirror really hard and really met so many of these politicians, and this is on, on both sides of the political aisle, I would even say even more so in the, in the Liberal National Party, 
really need to give themselves uh, an uppercut for selling so much of our assets to the Chinese. Um, there is no excuse for that. They are our enemy. They are our enemy, and uh, we really need to stop that. We need to get as much of those assets back as we possibly can, especially strategic assets such as the Port of Darwin uh, and places like that. But we also need to look at at sourcing our trade deals. We need to rethink our trade deals and if there's other other parts in the world where we can basically get the, the same thing. Sure, we might have to pay a bit more for it, but that's the way that it is. And see, China have played a really... I mean, they're playing the long game here. Mm. This is all economic warfare. They're deliberately making their, their products as cheap as possible because they want us to rely upon them and they get rich in the process. And so... Um, yeah, so we've got some big decisions that lay ahead of us, that's for sure. And definitely, I, I've, I agree with you that uh, Liberal National Party, they've just waved through the, uh, the, the, the foreign uh, ownership. I mean, what's the point in having a, a foreign uh, investment uh, review board? And uh, China is, well, it's not communist in the strict sense but it's a fascist state with both uh, mm. state and, and businesses working as one and as yeah. i said in my introduction we don't know we don't know to, to believe any of what they say they could be telling the truth that they've got the virus uh, uh under uh, control they th should it should be lying through their teeth i remember was it just a couple of weeks ago bronwyn bishop was pilloried on on sky news for saying that china released this virus to kill off their non-productive workers and spread it to the west to to cripple us and it was nicholas reese who said well oh, have you been on some dark internet forum but it, it, it sounds, you wouldn't put it past them. That's, that's sort of where we're at with our trust in China and what they've done to the world with this virus. Yeah, exactly. And look, you know, um, leftism is extreme. I mean, China is, is the extreme left. If you, want to see where, if you want to see where the left is heading in, in regard to their trajectory, look at where China is at the moment. You know, they, they, um, their science department completely and wholeheartedly agrees with government policy if their science if they actually go along with empirical evidence and it contradicts the government <laughs> policy then the empirical evidence is wrong the government is always right always right and this is why it's so it's so incredibly dangerous because um communist governments set themselves in the place of god they set themselves in the place of God and, and where they have no respect for life. They are the ones who get to choose who lives and who dies. You know, this is what I mean. This is, why, this is how they have set themselves up in, in, the, uh, in the place of God. They, they basically decide who lives and who dies. Um, they decide who gets what rights. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a real... It's a major, major, major concern. And, you know, it's interesting because according to the founding father, American father Jefferson, the only firm basis of our liberties is a strong conviction that they come from God and are not to be violated by man. And for this reason, a secular government can never be a limited government for it recognizes no authority other than itself, no rights other than those that it grants, and it believes it has a right to control everything it touches. So, yeah, I mean, and here's another, this is a quote from Greg Barnson. He said, if no divine law is recognized above the law of the state, then the law of man has become absolute in man's eyes, and then there is no logical barrier to totalitarianism. That is absolutely true, and uh, and this is why Christianity, in many ways, is the bulwark. It's the it's the bulwark to Islam, and it's the bulwark to extreme leftism. And this is why we need it, because with Christianity, it places emphasis on individual liberty, on free markets, 
um, and um, it, it places emphasis on private property, which is a big one, because the left um, hate the idea of, of uh, private property and also free speech. And free speech is the most precious of all the freedoms because it's by free speech that we defend all other freedoms, including freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, freedom of the press. That's freedom of uh, speech is absolutely crucial. Yeah, free speech is is definitely uh, more important now uh, than ever, and especially with uh, I know the, the 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 mainstream media they say oh don't believe what you see on on social media uh, listen to us but mainstream media have you been using oh this my opportunity gosh. To, yeah to also sensationalize and and scare yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of people as well and. I talked about the the Centrelink uh, queues. Uh, that that is government. Uh, a lot of people been talking about the the shortages yep. and in queues at the supermarkets. They're getting better now. The the major supermarkets they've been able to uh, drastically cha uh, uh, change how their supply chains operate. So everything gets to uh, the supermarkets uh, faster. Yep. They've already implemented social distancing in their in their in their supermarkets, and the reason also why the supermarkets have been able to get things back on the shelf is because government has got out of the way. They've cut the red mm -hmm. tape, the restrictions on uh, uh, deliveries late at night. It's a, it, it's it's actually through implementing more uh, free market solutions, and these companies are being you know, of. You know, talk talk about corporate social responsibility. We we have seen actual proper. Uh, practices of it, not making some rainbow flag uh, Facebook filter. Uh, yeah. it has actually been actual where uh, businesses on their own making long-term decisions for the better. Yep. You know, um, Thomas Jefferson said this. He said, he said, the natural progress of things is for liberty to yield and government to gain ground. He said that is the natural process progress of things. You know, Walter E. Williams, he's another great writer of mine, but he said, I am not saying that we are a totalitarian nation yet, but if you ask the question, which way are we headed tiny steps at a time? Are we headed toward more personal liberty or more government control over our lives? It would have to unambiguously be the latter more government control over our lives. And I just think, wow, he hit the nail on the head. We are basically slowly, and, and again, we go back to the analogy of the frog in the saucepan, to the frog in the pot. You know, we are slowly, government regulation and government control is slowly strangling us and slowly getting the upper hand. You know, it's funny because um, people say, um that Centrelink, you know, Christians who, uh, conservatives who actually use uh, Centrelink is a bad thing. And I say it's not a bad, you know, they, they, they throw it up in our face and they say, you, you know, you hate socialism, but you use Centrelink. The thing is, is that first of all, um, what we are getting from Centrelink is basically our own taxes back. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting our own taxes back we were the ones who put our money in it in the first place we're getting finally getting our money back but secondly you know if you were to go back 50 60 years ago who what what was the institution that was basically in charge of the welfare of the people and that is the church the church was the one that oversaw all of the welfare and hosp and in regard to charity and all those things that's why when you have a look at all the major charities that we have in our country right now you look at the founding on how they came into being they came into being because they were originally christian charities you know st vincent de paul is a great example the smith family which was started by christian businessmen you know and the same as lifeline is another example lifeline was started by christians and then we also um have World Vision. World Vision was founded by Christians. Uh, Compassion was another Christian organization. And so all these different, um, you know, we, we take it for granted. In fact, it's almost as if we, we haven't even noticed the, the progression. But slowly but surely, as the church has retreated out of society, government has gained ground and taken the place of the church. And this is 
where we, we, we find ourselves now. And the trajectory isn't slowing down. We are still moving in that direction. I want to finish off by talking about uh, family because... Uh, I saw a, uh, saw a post from a, 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 or a meme from a divorce lawyer who said, huh, couples uh, ha- having to spend uh, six months uh, together in lockdown, I'm going to be in such a, a good, a good business uh, after this is uh, over here. <laughs> Which is yeah, an extremely uh, cynical uh, <laughs> uh, position to take. But uh, we have seen uh, uh, with... Uh, a lot of uh, parents these days they dump their children at school or at childcare, uh, basically leave them for them to be educated there. But we're yeah, yeah. schools clo- close now, and uh, for, uh, a lot of parents uh, are now uh, going to have to uh, learn aspects of of homeschooling, and and yep. are, are going to have the the children at home full time, where they'll they'll have to parent uh, full time, and. So you also hope that there's a, a turning point here as well, is that we'll see the the return of family life, of uh, fa- uh, families bonding uh, together, uh, parents uh, uh, properly raising their children with discipline, because I've noticed quite a few number of parents struggle uh uh, uh, just when I've been out of the supermarket, struggle to to teach their children social social distancing, and you you, 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 t- you talked before about uh, was it uh, in in relation to uh, uh, to God uh, with, mm. with him wanting the uh, the best for us. That's like uh, parents are strict because they they care. They've got to be. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh I think uh, when the crisis is the final, is finally coming to an end and we're looking about reopening the schools, I think there's going to be a lot of relieved parents. And uh, you'll see a lot of the, the bashing of homeschoolers. People are going to have a, a new respect for homeschoolers. Mm. <laughs> I think a lot of parents are going to have a new respect for um, parents that, that take the time out of their schedule who don't get paid and basically teach their own mm. kids. I mean, that's a huge call. I mean, I've, I have a friend of mine who does that and I have huge respect for him. But um, that's massive. I think uh, we're starting to learn a lot of lessons. In You know, uh, Tim, it's interesting because we, over the past fortnight, we are getting a taste of socialism. It's like we're getting a, a, a trial run of, of, of what life is like living in, in a socialist country. And I think, I'm hoping... I'm hoping it's going to turn a lot of people off. I think it'll turn a lot of people off. Once they see the bread lines and the, and the long queues, they'll think to themselves, well, we did that during the coronavirus. I don't want that again. And um, so I'm hoping that people will have a newfound respect for free markets, have a newfound respect for capitalism, and have a, a newfound respect for the family unit um as well and so yeah there are a lot of pluses that we can take away from this situation so we yeah we definitely need to focus on them if we did have socialism already the the supermarkets would already be empty even before that (laughs) the pandemic like they were in in venezuela well i'd like to thank you uh daniel for for coming on uh, my show tonight and accommodating uh the rescheduling and the uh the technical teething problems with me setting up my ho- uh, my new home home studio, uh, I think we did uh, in the end uh, quite uh, quite well. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not it's not all perfect. I had to readjust my chair uh, during the show, but uh, we did have a big audience uh, tonight in the chat. So certainly a lot of people were were interested to to hear what we have to say and are turning to uh, alternative uh, media and. Uh, no, and not just uh, relying on uh, what the, what they're hearing from the the mainstream media uh, during this uh, time as well. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Daniel, and take care. All the best to to you and your your family. Thanks, Tim, and to you too. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.